Uh, right now, though, I want to talk about a very eventful day at Hamilton City Hall yesterday. Hamilton uh, Councillor Terry Whitehead uh, was uh, chastised, uh, some people would use the phrase, uh, by uh, fellow councillors. Uh, this is all based on a, a report that came from the Integrity Commission uh, based on uh, Councillor Whitehead's behaviour over a period of time. Uh, joining us to talk about this is John Best, of course, the publisher of the Bay Observer, who's been following this story. Uh, John, pleasure to have you back on the program. Uh, first and foremost, were you surprised by the council move yesterday? Uh, I think uh, I was a little surprised uh, because they they actually went beyond uh, what the uh, uh, integrity commissioner had suggested. Um, he uh, the commissioner suggested a, a docking of pay and some restriction on his ability to interact with staff. They stripped him of his um, chairmanships and uh, vice chairmanships of committees, um, which was probably the right thing to do because uh, there's, as you know, as a former member, uh, the chair of committees gets involved with staff uh, when they do uh, agenda review and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So. It, it would create a, a you know a, a bit of a conflict I think so but I think they were really uh, painted in a corner to some extent uh, with uh, you know you hate to say it but with an election you know a year away uh, how could anybody is that, is that, is that much of a factor because as, yeah. as, as they as the report mentioned this is not the first time. I mean, they talked about one specific incident, but they also said there's a body of work here that goes back a number of years. And, and through each and every one of those incidents, uh, basically the council turned their back and said nothing to see here. As, as one of them talked about, uh, and the Integrity Commission talked about this during the interview process, uh, the, the common consensus seemed to be, well, that's just Terry being Terry. Uh, that wasn't the attitude yesterday. What changed? Well, I think what changed was was the content of the report, and and it, it really painted them in a corner. Uh, you know, it, it exposed uh, exactly that the the passive approach that past councils and even this council uh, had taken. But certainly, Bill, <laughs> from a historical standpoint, I mean, um, I was looking through some some stories. I mean, there was an incident with Whitehead, and, and you'll remember this one, I think. Um, where he was uh, going after a staff member in 2010. That's 11 years ago, long before he got sick. And uh, he was going after a staffer. I forget what the issue was. But uh, it was so bad that uh, the then city manager, Chris Murray, uh, that's when he stepped in and said, I'm going to ask all my staff to leave the council chamber and I'll take your questions. Uh, that's how, uh, you know, how seriously he took uh, the tone of that exchange. So we're not talking about some. We are talking about this meeting that happened last September. That's what triggered the complaint. But this is really, uh, you know, some of these cringeworthy uh, exchanges that he's been involved in go back well over a decade. Uh, and as I mentioned in my commentary earlier this morning, uh, you know, there's there's a, a culpability here. You know, as a, you know, we we talked about the old phrase. You know, the experts saying, you know, if you see something, say something. Uh, these people on council and past councils, they saw a lot and they said nothing over the years. Uh, so you know, I I noticed some of them patting themselves on the back like, well, we're doing the right thing. Well, what took you so long? That seems to be the consensus I'm hearing from an awful lot of people this morning. Well, and, and I, I think that's a, a fair criticism. Um, there, and, and because some of the counselors have been around for a while, I mean, they're, they're probably searching their consciences, uh, saying, are there instances where I put pressure on staff? Because it doesn't always happen at council meetings. It can happen, uh, you know, uh, in fact, uh, probably more likely to happen. Well, you heard council. yesterday, I, I thought, a very damning assertion. You're right. It, there's the public uh, airing of this, you know, where there's where the, the media are there, and, and you can see the back and forth and the brow beating that, ha that happens. And you're right. Uh, Councillor Whitehead's not the only one who's been guilty of that. But then we heard about a number of incidents uh, that I'm sure are more better documented in the report. Uh, of, of counselors actually trying to influence reports being written by staff and actually going in. This is behind closed doors and I guess in the hallways before they even get to the council chamber saying, I don't like that part. I want that change. I mean, that's it's unconscionable that that would go on. And I, it raises more questions, I guess, now that, you know, if anybody on council thinks, well, that good, we've done that now, that's behind us. No, it's not. There's some accusations that have been made there that I think we need to con continue to look into about the culture that's going on at City Hall. It's a well-known, not much of a secret, that uh, agenda manipulation is one of the key ways of uh, either killing something or 
or advancing it, uh, we've seen an, an agenda manipulation is exactly what you're describing there. Uh, there have been instances uh, that I've heard about where where items were deliberately kept off an agenda, items that should have been put on an agenda were kept off um, in order to not have to deal with them. Um, there's other areas where items were bumped up. Uh, there's uh, Some of the counselors have been around for a while, and, and some of the former counselors uh, really uh, need to search their minds because there's uh, there's a lot of this to go around. I mean, <clears throat> in Whitehead's case, it was mostly bombast at council meetings and threatening to get people fired, and and you know that's that's terrible. The question is, did he ever get anybody fired? And and the reason I ask that is because I'm pretty sure that other past counselors and maybe present, but certainly past counselors were 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 actually successful in getting staff fired. So, you know, I'm not uh, with Whitehead. There was a lot of you know a lot of this yelling at, at council, and certainly a lot of threatening, and it's uh, you know totally objectionable. You know, it's uh, obnoxious. But um, you know, there's a, there's a culture there that it appears is is starting to get sort of worked through. Uh, but um, you know, the history of this council is that uh, staff uh, were he heavily politicized in the past. Well, yeah, and we've heard examples of that as well. And, and I know that, you know, people are going to look at this and say, well, wait a second, uh, you know, junior members of, of, of the administration, can't get, they don't get hired by council, they don't get fired by council, uh, but you can exert influence over the people that can hire and fire them. And we just don't know at this stage, although there seems to be, a, the, in, I guess, the innuendo that uh, that, that ha has happened a lot more. So. Uh, you know, I just, I don't want these guys to put this behind you, and I don't want the public to put this behind them right now to think, well, it's all done now. Everything is, we're all going to live happily ever after. And I think a, a number of the counselors seem to indicate that. Uh, we're, I think what has this probably done, and probably, I hope anyway, increased to a, a, an nth degree the, the amount of scrutiny that has to be done towards council. Well, the worst thing that could happen, Bill, is that it gets papered over by kind of a fake politeness at council meetings, and meanwhile, the real work gets done behind the scenes. So you're absolutely right. Um, uh, unfortunately, um, there's going to have to be some vigilance, and, and unfortunately, it, it, the public isn't going to see a lot of the things that, that really need to be addressed. It's going to be up to members of council not only to police their behavior at council, but the behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, where where pressure may be placed on staff, and by the way, I mean, staff are not perfect, and we don't want to get into a situation where staff can't be criticized, because that that not. would not be helpful either. No, exactly. But uh, as you say, there's a methodology that should be followed, and there are Absolutely. rules, and uh, there are, as I think they used yesterday, guardrails as, as that need to be uh, adhered to. Uh, John, as always, more to come on this. Uh, thanks so much for the time today. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, Bill. John Best, uh, publisher of the Bay Observer. Uh,